Hello dear friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Mukesh English, this is Mukesh Soni. In this video, we are going to have a discussion of a very famous poem titled Beyond Memories. Beyond Memories is a famous poem written by a Kannada poet, writer, literary historian and critic and researcher and his name is D.S. Shivarudrappa. He was awarded the title of Rashtra Kavi, the poet of the nation by the government of Karnataka during its Suvarna Karnataka Golden Jubilee celebrations in 2006. He is the only third poet to receive the honor after Govinda Pai and Kuempu. Shiva Rudrapa's poem, Beyond Memories, is translated from Kannada to English by C.P. Ravi Kumar. Mr. C.P. Ravi Kumar writes in Kannada, English, Hindi, and translates between these languages as well. His work has been published in popular Kannada periodicals such as Prajavani, Mayura, Kannada Prabhand, Gandhi Bajar. So this is the brief introduction about the writer as well as the translator. <clears throat> now let's know about this poem. The poem titled Beyond Memories talks about how memories fade with with time. How does memory become a tool of resistance? The poem Beyond Memories is a reflection on life, memory and forgetting in four important sections in this poem. Each of these sections is coherent with an individual central theme while retaining an overall cohesiveness to the poem. Now let's begin it. The section one of this poem, the poet says, This world, this world will finally forget everything sooner or later, things will fade away. Yet, you ask me if I remember your words of yesterday. Will a plant remember how many flowers bloomed in yesterday's spring? If you do, if you ask a word, if you ask a bird, Will it recall how many tunes did it sing? Does an ocean remember how many rivers have flown into it and become its part? Does the sky remember how many stars have shown or fallen from the very start? So in this section, we find here the more importance is given here, forgetting something. So this first section of this poem uses a catalog of images. You find here so many images here from nature, which establishes how forgetting is a routine and a natural part of resistance, natural part of existence. So forgetting is very important. It is a natural part of our existence, no matter how beautiful, no matter how memorable, no matter how important any event may be, but it's a gradual fading from memory is inevitable. So there are some memories which will fade day by day, which will become a yesterday. So these forgetting the things is quite very much inevitable. That's why the poet says here, this world will finally forget everything sooner or later. Things will fade away. Nothing is permanent. Whatever you remember today, that will remember the words of yesterday. So the poet gives us here a fantastic example. The poet asks the questions that how many flowers are there which can remember, uh, sorry, how many plants are there which can remember that how many flowers bloomed yesterday spring? How many birds are there? Can you remember any bird which can recall that on which tunes did it sing yesterday? Can you recall any ocean? Can an ocean recall that how many how many rivers got submerged in it? Can you can the sky remember that how many stars have shown or fallen from the very start, from the very beginning? So it's not very easy to remember everything because forgetting is a routine and it's a natural part of existence. It may be beautiful, it may be memorable it may be an important event but the gradual fading of the memory is quite inevitable is quite permanent that something 
there are the things the memory is about to fade memory is about to memory cannot exist forever that's what the poet says in this first section now in the second section the poet says we owe our very existence to our memories you and i we mean something to one another when we remain in each other's memory every human being attempts to frame as many memories as he can what a writer or an artist creates is limited by his memory span so in this second section the poet has explored the relationship between existence and memory so it's it has been told many times that how every individual dies twice it has been told many times that everybody dies two times how the first time the person dies due to its physical death actual physical death second time that is called the last time the person's name or the memory is brought to mind when you remember when the person's name and the memory is brought to your mind that is another signal another sign of the person's the the, the other person's death and the another uh, death is here your actual physical death so just as how cultures and civilizations are a calculation of culture monuments art literature they produce similarly our existence and our relationships they are a sum of our memories what are memories our existence and our relationships are the sum of our memories that's why the poet says we owe our very existence to our memories you and i we mean something to one another when we remain in, in each other's memory every human being attempts to frame as many memories as he can what a writer or an artist creates is always limited by his memory span so now we are moving to the last segments the third and the fourth sections in the third section the poet says but thank goodness that our memories will fade out over time if our memories prevailed across births life would be a ghastly pantomime ghastly means very terrible pantomime means to say pantomime means a kind of a performance in an art in the drama in which a performer communicate a performer communicate through the movement or the expression while telling the story so being able to forget is such a gift to mankind every child must learn the alphabets after a complete unwind means to say something is called learn unlearn and relearn this very nice phrase to connect here learn unlearn forget it then again relearn so the poet here celebrates forgetting the poet calls forgetting as a gift that makes a life bearable that makes a life something which could be bearable that's why the poet says here thank goodness that our memory will fade out over time means to say our memories are not permanent if our memories prevailed across births suppose if we don't forget if you always remember how will be the life the life will be horrible the why the life will be something like the performance of a person who expresses everything through the facial expression then what is a gift to mankind that you are able to forget the poet says that the mankind the human being is able to forget that's a gift to mankind and every child must learn the alphabets after a complete unwind means to say once once a child learns everything he must learn alphabets later that means to say a kind of a revise a kind of a revision so learn unlearn and relearn so in the fourth section the last section of this poem the poet says if we pile memories on the top of memories they will simply clutter up on our inside 
we must throw things away once in a while failures victories our pains and our pride take a leaf take a leaf out of the book of a tree the shades in the winter remember the smile of gamata and shade and stand lighter so from section c is so from section 3 the poet connects to the which section to the fourth section and this fourth section expounds the idea of willfully and mindfully forgetting in walking the authority of jain traditions of renunciation the poet reminds us that the true salvation comes only when we leave behind all those things that weigh us down what we need to leave behind failures victory our pains our pride so the poet gives a reference to gautameshwara by using the word gamata gautameshwara gamatesh sorry gamteshwara so gamteshwara we can say gamteshwara or bahubali uh whose naked structure stand full on the top of the hill in shravana belgola right shravana belgola in karnataka so what happens here so in in the jain tradition gamteshwara bahubali was the younger brother of bharateshwara who challenged his elder brother in a race to the throne he defeated bharat in the duels and this made him lawful successor but he could not forgive himself for the anguish he had caused to his brother he decided to he decided to uh, include he, sorry he decided to leave all such things he decided to renounce all the worldly desires all the worldly pleasures including his clothes and he took penance so something which is perishable here which is perishable to the which, something which is perishable here that is your memory so here the poet says very much uh, has given very outstanding example here of gamateshwara who decides to renounce all worldly desires including his clothes and he took a penance so something which is perishable we need to take out that is the message by the poet in this poem the beyond memories so the this poem expresses one important thing is here what's the important thing that it's a reflection it's a reflection on life memory and forgetting it also talks about that forgetting is very important and it is quite Uh, sometimes forgetting can become a tool of your resistance and it also talks about how memories fade with time so this is how i have tried to give a glimpse of this poem thank you so much for watching this video please click on the like button write in the comment box if you not yet subscribed my channel please do subscribe thank you once again dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukeshenglish@gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again